Welcome everyone. In this video, I want to go over basic protections and reflections in R2. So let's say uh, we have a vector with the components of x, y in R2, and that's uh, we have seen that before. This is our vector v, the components x, y. The projection of uh, the vector x, y, the vector v onto x axis, the x component is that. So the way you can write that vector, we know it's just x zero. So it's that. The projection of v onto y axis is zero y. So as uh, it's that vector. So, and the components of this vector, you know, it's gonna be zero, zero y. So now how can we write v? We know v can be written as v is just the vector with component x, y, or you can say it's the vector with the component x, zero, plus the vector with the component zero, y, and that's just the projection of v onto x plus the projection of v onto y. So you can use that notation, and that's called the orthogonal decomposition of the vector. Now, what we can do, we can also use matrices for this one, or the linear operators, or show this by matrix multiplication. First of all, uh, the projection of V onto X is, uh, if I use a matrix, so is that's matrix notation is X zero. Again, the same thing, vector notation, you have X zero. So matrix notation you do, to get that. How can I get that matrix? So this is the linear operator. If you take any vector and multiply it by this matrix, then you are gonna get its uh, the components of its projection onto x-axis. Let's try this one. One times x is x plus zero times y is zero. So we get x here, zero times x plus zero times y is zero. So you get that one. So the matrix or the linear operator for the projection of V onto X axis is given by this matrix. And uh, as you can say, if you have a vector in R2 and you multiply that by a matrix, so you can change the direction or uh, uh, the length. So let's start with those first projections and reflections. The projection of V onto Y axis, and again, matrix, now you know the vector is the component zero Y, that's the matrix notation. How you can get that by multiplying any vector in R2 by this matrix. So let's try this one, zero times X is zero plus zero times Y is zero. So it's gonna give you zero, zero times X is zero, one times Y is Y. It's going to give you that. So the matrix, again, this is matrix notation. The matrix for the projection of the onto y axis is given by that. So now, what else we can do? We can also take our vector and reflect it across x axis. If I reflect this vector across the x axis, the x component doesn't change, but the y component becomes negative. So that's the reflection of V across the X axis. If you reflect it across the Y axis, so again, if you look at this, the Y component doesn't change and that the X component becomes negative. And across the origin, so it's gonna be that one. So which is gonna give you negative X, and negative y, just remember it that way. So now the matrices for that, again, the reflection of uh, this vector, this is matrix notation across the x-axis is just x negative y. So as you see, x doesn't change and we have negative y here. So it's this matrix, which is one, zero, zero, negative one, let's multiply again. You're going to see matrix multiplication in details, and you can watch the video on that also, but it's pretty easy. So 
1 times x is x plus 0 times y, which I wrote it here. It's just going to give you x. 0 times x is 0. Negative 1 times y is negative y, so it's x negative y. Reflection of this vector across the y-axis is just, it's that matrix, and as you see, it's negative x, and y doesn't change. So we have it here. If you want to find that by matrix multiplication, you just use that matrix. Negative 1 times x, I wrote it here, is negative x, and 0 times y is 0. So the answer is negative x. 0 times x is right here, plus 1 times y is y, and it's going to give you y. And that's what you get. Now, how about across the origin? Across the origin, as you can see, it's this vector. So we have negative x, negative y. How can we get that by matrix notation? This is the matrix, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And if you multiply negative 1 times x is negative x plus 0 times y is 0. So you just get negative x, 0 times x is 0 plus negative one times y is negative y. So we'll give you that. Now the reflection of V across the X axis, you can also say that's the projection of V onto X axis minus the projection of V onto Y axis is that vector. So our original vector was here. So it's, this is the reflection. The reflection of V onto uh, across y-axis, the projection of V onto y-axis minus the projection of V onto x-axis. So that doesn't change and you have this one. So now let's talk about general projections and reflections in R2. What do I mean by general projection of uh, general projections and reflections in R2? Let's say we have a line in R2 through the origin. So our goal is to find the coordinates of this vector, and that vector is parallel to the line. So that's the projection of V onto L. And you can also have that, which is perpendicular to our line. So what you want to find is the projection of V onto L perp, so which is perpendicular to L. Now, the way I can write this vector V, so we can say this is the projection of V onto L plus the projection of V onto L perp. And let's see how we can find, our goal is to find the matrices that are going to give us those coordinates. So, and it's much easier to understand this with an example. For example, borderline y equals to 2 over 3x. Let's notice something. The slope of this line is 2 over 3, and we know that the slope is delta y over delta x. So if I have a vector with the components 3, 2, again, x is here. Don't forget the denominator is x. 3, 2, if you have a vector like this, that vector will be always parallel to L. So any scalar multiple of this vector will be parallel to L. A vector perpendicular to this, you know, two lines are perpendicular if their slopes have uh, are opposite reciprocal or negative reciprocal of each other. So the slope of that one is going to be 2 over 3 over negative 2 or negative 3 over 2. So any vector with this component, the negative 2, Three will be perpendicular or orthogonal to L. Now the projection of V onto L, again, is any scalar multiple of that vector. So you can just say eight times three over two, three, two, and the projection of V onto L perp is any scalar multiple of that vector. So you can write that as V times negative two, three, and A and B are just constants. So now we know that V can be written as projection of V onto L plus projection of V onto L perp. And these are the components of V, any vector. 
So you can just say x, y equals to a times three, two plus b times negative two, three. And solving for x, x is gonna be three a minus two b. And y, well, it's gonna be two a plus three b. And what you wanna do here is eliminate a and b. So to eliminate b, you can multiply the top equation by three and the bottom by two. So you get nine a minus six b equals to three x and the bottom and you get four a plus six b equals to two y. So then you, as you can see, they eliminate. And if you isolate a, you get three over 13 x plus two over 13 y. So now you wanna eliminate a so you can multiply the top by two at the bottom by negative three. So you get two X equals to six A minus four B. And the bottom is gonna be negative three Y minus six A minus nine B. And if you isolate B here, A's cancel each other, you get that expression. So, now if you wanna find the projection of B onto L, we know that is eight times three or three, two as we saw that here. So if you wanna find that we have the expression for A, so you can just say three, and that was the expression three over 13 x plus two over 13 by times three, two. And the way you can find the components, you can just distribute the three, so you get nine over 13 x plus six over 13 y. And if you distribute the two, you get six over 13 x plus four over 13 y. The projection of B onto L perp is B times negative three over two. And we saw that also. So you can just write it, distribute the two. So you get four over 13 X minus six over 13 Y. Distribute the three and you get negative six over 13 X plus nine over 13 Y. How can you present the matrices for this? So the matrix of the projection of B onto L, you can just put X, Y here and go to the first expression for X as we have those coefficients. So just write the coefficient is nine over 13, six over 13. That's four X and four Y is six over 13 and four over 13. So we just write it. What's the meaning of this? If you take any vector in R2 and multiply it by this vector, then uh, that's going to give you the component of a vector that is parallel to our line, to our original line L. So, and for, uh, and that should be positive, the projection of B onto L perp. Again, you can go here. We have four over 13, negative six over 13. So these are the X coefficients, you write it below X, and then for Y, you have negative six over 13 and nine over 13. So if you take any vector in R and multiply it by this matrix, that's gonna be the, it's gonna be perpendicular to our line L with equation, which is right here, two over three X. And you can try one on your own. Now, what's the reflection? If you want to find the reflection of V across L, the line itself, it just, you know, so what we want to find basically, let me show it to you here. So we want to find the matrix for that. Is the reflection of V across our line. So, And we know for that one, you can just do projection of B onto L minus, not plus, but minus projection of B onto L per. And we have, we have the vector for that, which was that one minus, and this one we found that also. So to find that new, components of that vector again, what you can do is nine, and uh, that's plus nine minus four over 13 is five over 13 x six minus negative six over 13 
right here. So we have negative, negative is positive. 12 over 13, six minus negative six over 13. And that's 12 over 13 next. And four minus nine is going to give you negative five over 13. So again, if you want to write the matrix for x's, I'm sure you already know how to write that. You can put x and y. So for x's, we have 5 over 13, 12 over 13, which is right here. And for y, we have 12 over 13 and negative 5 over 13, which is that one. I think that's uh, good enough for this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to do the same thing, but in R3. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Have a good one, everyone.